In this video, we're going to be setting up the Android SDK and the Android Studio IDE on a Windows 10 machine. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because I just finished a course on React Native uh, for Eduonics, and I'm going to be doing a YouTube crash course on it as well. And we're going to be using Windows, and you need to have this set up. Um, you also need this, obviously, if you're doing any Android Java development, um, but you're also going to need it if you want to use Cordova or Ionic, which is another JavaScript framework for building mobile apps. Um, now, I know there's a lot of tutorials on this subject, but things are constantly changing, and I also feel that many of those videos are missing information. So I'm going to show you start to finish how to set up the Android software development kit. All right, and we also want the Android virtual device because that's what we'll use to test our, our React Native application and so on. All right, so there's a couple uh, main steps. So first, you need to have Java installed. Make sure you have it. You probably do. Uh, if you don't, just search for Java download and just get that set up. All right, and we're going to download Android Studio from this page here. We're going to install it. And then we need to open up the SDK manager install and install a bunch of other stuff, all right, including Haxum, which has to do with um, the AVD uh, acceleration, the build tools, as well as a system image for the virtual device. Okay, we also have to edit the path variable, um, make it so that we can run uh, the SDK manager and, and some other stuff through the command line. Um, we also want to create an Android virtual device. All right, so that's the plan. You want to go to developer.android.com slash studio and just go ahead and download it. I already have it downloaded. It is quite a large file, so it may take a while. All right, so once you have that downloaded, just go ahead and open it up. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and run that. Okay, so we're going to go through the installer, make sure you have the SDK and the virtual device selected. Click Next. All right, now these two locations are important. This is where Android Studio is going to be installed. This is in your programs, uh, program files folder. And then this is the location of the SDK, and it's good to take note of this directory. Okay, by default, at this point, it's going to be in your user folder, and then app data, local, Android, and then SDK. Okay, that's the location of it. So we're going to click Next, Install, and we'll let that get set up. All right, guys, so that actually took quite a while, even on a, a pretty, uh, pretty hefty machine. So now that that's completed, we'll click Next, and let's click Finish. We'll, we'll keep the Start Android Studio checked. All right, so you'll probably see a screen like this. Uh, we're going to go ahead and click Next. And it's going to ask us the type of setup we want. We're going to choose standard. Click next and finish. Okay, so now it's going to go ahead and download all the components. All right, guys, so that actually took a while too. Um, I'm pausing the video, so don't be alarmed if um, yours is taking a hell of a lot longer than mine is. All right, so let's go ahead and click finish. And you should, should see a screen like this. So you can choose to start a new Android Studio project, but we're not going to do that. We're not even going to use Android Studio. Uh, that's more for Java development when you're building native apps. Uh, but what we want to do is go into the SDK Manager. All right, and you can go to it by going to this Configure and then SDK Manager. And of course, you can also get to it through Android Studio if you want. So let's open that up, and you should see something like this. Now with react native let me just open up their documentation real quick okay let's see so with react native we go to get started it's basically um it tells us how to do what we're doing in the android development environment uh, but notice that we need to install android 6 the sdk version 6.0 which is also known as marshmallow all right, uh, if you don't plan on using React Native, then you don't have to do this. You can just stick with the latest version. At this point, it's 7.1.1. But we're going to be working with React Native, so I want to make sure that I check off Android 6.0 as well. Okay, and you can have multiple versions of the SDK. Okay, next thing I want to do is go to SDK Tools, and you want to make sure that you have... Let's see, a couple things. This right here, Intel 
emulator, accelerator, or Haxm, H-A-X-M installer. You want to make sure that that's checked off, okay, if you want to use the virtual device. Uh, we want the platform tools. Now, um, the SDK tools for the latest version is uh, 25.2.4, and yours will probably be different depending on when you're watching this. Uh, but we also want to make sure we installed the build tools for Marshmallow for Android 6. All right, so um, we're going to do that after. Okay, we're going to launch the standalone SDK manager after because that gives us some extra options. But for now, I think that we're all set to go ahead and install what we checked off. Let me just double check. Yeah, so that should be good. So let's go ahead and click apply. And click OK. We're going to accept the agreement and click next. All right, and the SDK um, version 6 is actually revision 23. But like I said, if you're not if you don't plan on using React Native, then don't worry about installing the the version 6 of the SDK. Just go with the latest. Okay, so that's all set. Let's click finish. And now I'm going to open up the, the standalone SDK manager. So we'll click that. And then it should open a window like this. And notice that we have other options now. So we want to, if you installed version 6, you want to install the build tools for that. Now remember I said there, that's revision 23. So we want to make sure we want uh, these 23 dot zero dot one two and three so I'm going to check those off okay and then we're going to go down and we need to also install a system image for the virtual device now for the latest version 7.1.1 you can see that those are checked off but for 6.0 we're going to go down and we just want to check the Intel 86 atom image okay if you have 64 bit make sure you choose the 64 bit version all right and then that's all we need we don't need that other stuff and let's see uh, I think that should be good okay so we get the build tools we have the system image and I think we should be good to go so let's go ahead and click install and accept this install all right guys so that took about five minutes or so now we should be all set as far as installing our extra packages so let's close that up now next thing we want to look at is the path variables all right so we're going to open up the control panel uh, one second I just need to do this off on a different monitor all right, so we want to go to system and security, and then we want to go to system, advanced system settings, and you should get this box, and you want to just open up this environment variables button. All right, now we want to edit the path variable for under user variables, and we're going to click edit, and notice that it's already here, okay? Now, I notice sometimes it, it's not sometimes you have to add it all right so that you, what you want to do if you don't see these two things right here you need to add them yourself all right so it should be in your user folder and then app data local Android SDK platform tools and then also in the same SDK folder just tools if you don't have these go ahead and click new and then just add that in there add that path both of those platform tools and tools all right, and then just save it. You also want to add right here, if you don't have it, the system variables. I'm not sure if these are here because I've already had them before or if it's just automatically added. So just to, to make sure if you don't see these, add them yourself. All right, so we have the variable Android underscore home, which is going to get set to the location of the SDK. All right, if you don't have it, click new and then just put you know Android home underscore home here and then the path here all right and then just to be safe you also want to add this Android SDK home 
and then put that same path. Okay, if you don't have the Java home, you also want to add that, and that's the location of your wherever your Java installation is. All right, so if we look in my program files folder, and I think I have a couple versions of Java, uh, but let's see, program files and Java. Okay, yeah, see, so notice I have a bunch of folders here, but it's, I'm using the JDK 1.8.0 underscore 111. Okay, so it's pointing to this folder here. You just want to make sure you have your Java home system variable. And then that should be good, okay, as far as paths. And notice if you look at the React Native uh, documentation, it tells you to do that Android home as well. It gives you the same instructions I, I just gave you. So now that we've done that, we should be able to run, use our Android command in the command line. All right, so let's close all these out. And I'm going to open up just a standard Windows command line. And let's see what happens if we say Android. Okay, so that, that actually opens up the SDK manager. All right, now um, we want to open the uh, AVD manager, which is the Android Virtual Device Manager, because we want to create uh, an emulator or a virtual device. So we should be able to say Android AVD and that opens up this window here now you can also get to this window through android studio just for if for some reason the android command isn't working for you um, you can go to android studio and you can open it from there so we want to create a virtual device all right so we can give it a name uh, we'll just say android device and we can choose an actual device i'm going to use the latest which is the nexus 6 for a target. Now, if you're using React Native, remember you want to use Android 6.0. Any SDKs you have installed will show up right here. And then for the CPU, we want to use that system image that we installed. Okay, remember that Intel Atom 64? Uh, if we didn't install that, we wouldn't have an option here. We wouldn't be able to set this up. Now, as far as the skin, we're just going to choose this skin with dynamic hardware controls. Um, by default, Oops, what did I do? By default, uh, it's telling me it's it's filling in uh, 3072 for the memory. That's way too high. You can see down here we're getting a warning. It says on Windows, emulating RAM greater than 768 megs may fail. All right, so I'm going to change this to 750. And notice that that goes away. All right, um, and we should be all set. So let's click OK. And that should go ahead and create the device for us. We'll click OK again. And there we go. So now what I'm going to do is just highlight it, click Start. I'm going to choose to scale the display to the real size and click Launch. And that should open up the emulator for us. And then we should be ready to um, develop React Native applications. All right, so it opened on another screen. Let me just bring it down. Close this out. And hopefully this works. Okay, so it looks like everything's good. We get this little welcome message. Let's click got it. Now this is going to be much, much slower than a real device. So just keep that in mind. Um, it's, it can get kind of frustrating, but um, it's a really nice tool to be able to see how your application would run. All right, and we have camera. Um, I'm not sure if I set the camera to actually work. Let's just see what happens if we click that. All right, so cannot connect to camera. I believe in the, in the settings of the virtual device, we could have chose to use a webcam. Um, so you may want to do that, go back and just edit that um, if you need the camera. And if we click this right here, this, uh, I guess it's kind of a, a settings button, opens up all these different options, um, gallery, music, the phone, the messaging, all that stuff. And it works just like a regular Android device, okay? We click the home button here, that should close it up. And we're ready to start creating applications. 
All right, so what I'm going to do now is start on the React Native course. Um, now, I do have an Eduonics course that you probably want to check out if you are interested in React Native. Uh, um, the YouTube video, YouTube course will be, uh, will include a lot, but obviously I'm not going to go through all the available components and all of that. Uh, but what we will do is get it set up, get it installed and running, um, and then we'll look at some of the important UI components and, and see how it works and how we can get it running on the emulator. All right, so hopefully this helped you guys out, whether you're using React Native or you need the SDK for some other reason. Hopefully you were able to get it set up. If not, leave, leave a comment. If I can't help you out, someone else will. Um, please subscribe, give it a like, give it a dislike if you didn't like it, and thanks for watching.